I'm a firm believer in the concept that if things are made easy, they're much more likely to get done. That's why I made this easy to follow step-by-step -step video guide so that you can jailbreak your own DSi or DSi XL and start enjoying your games on it your way. Grab your DSi and your computer. You're about to learn something new. This video is largely based on the incredible work done by the fine folks over at the dsi.hacks.guide website. I've got a link for you in the video description. I've donated to the guide and I hope that you'll consider doing the same. You'll need an SD card or a micro SD card with an SD card adapter for this process to work. These cards are an incredible value and I can't think of a better way to add storage to your own DSi or DSi XL. The first cracker out of the barrel here, so to speak, is to make sure that your DSi camera is working correctly and that you can access the DSi camera app. Starting with your SD card inserted into your system, tap on the camera app from the main menu of your DSi. I want to take a moment to point this out just in case you've never actually used the camera app on your DSi before. The first time you load it up, you'll be presented with this unnecessarily long tutorial. Just complete the tutorial process and then you can proceed with the guide. You'll be presented with the album for the internal system storage. From here, tap on SD card in the top right corner. Your system will take just a moment to establish some initial files and folders that are needed on the SD card. Once your system has accessed your SD card, tap on album. Just like before, if this is your first time using the camera app, you'll need to tap next in the bottom touch display several times to clear out the messages to access the menu. There's a variable on your menu and you need to make sure you verify this before you proceed. Some DSi systems have a Facebook icon in their camera menu and some do not. Make note of whether your system does or does not have this Facebook icon before proceeding. With this information in tow, go ahead and power off your Nintendo DSi system. Everything you need to download is contained in one single all-in-one file. It's hosted at the mega.nz website and linked in the video description. Click on the large green download button near the right center side of the screen. Give mega.nz a moment to get the hamster running in the wheel and the file will be downloaded to your computer. From your Windows desktop, open up a new file explorer window for your downloads folder. Inside your downloads folder, you'll find the single AIO file in zip format. You'll need to extract this file in order to copy the contents of the file over to your SD or micro SD card you intend to use with your DSi. Once you have it extracted, delete it from your downloads folder. To make copying files over to the SD card simple, I'm going to drag the File Explorer window for downloads all the way over to the left side and snap it in place. Remove the SD card from your DSi and insert it into your PC's card reader. Once you see your system recognize the SD card with a new pop-up window for File Explorer, just drag and drop that one all the way over to the right of the desktop and snap it in place. Alright, now that everything is staged, let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside this all-in-one folder and get things moved over to the SD card. You'll want to copy everything that you see inside the AIO folder except for the one folder that says Memory Pit Choose File. So in this instance, I've pressed Ctrl A on the keyboard to select everything and then deselected the Memory Pit Choose File folder by clicking on it. Now you can just drag and drop everything else right onto the root of your SD card. Back at your Downloads folder, you can delete everything out of Downloads with the exception of the Memory Pit Choose File folder. Okay, make sure you pay close attention here because you want to make sure you copy the right version of the PIT file over to your DSi or DSi XL. There are two subfolders inside that Memory Pit folder. One is meant for camera apps that do have the Facebook icon and one is meant for camera apps that do not. In the original example shown here, my camera app does have the Facebook icon, so I'm going to double click into that folder. Both of these folders have a pit.bin file. One is compatible for having the Facebook icon and one isn't. Over on the SD card, navigate to the private folder and double click into it. That's the folder that was created when you originally set up things on your Nintendo DSi camera app. Next up, double click into the DS subfolder, double click into the app folder, then double click into the 484E494A folder. That's your camera app folder. You'll see that there's a pit.bin file already here and you'll need to rename this file temporarily. Now let's see, I think this will make for a fine temporary file name for the pit.bin file. Cool, once you have the file renamed, you can navigate back over to your downloads folder, then drag and drop the pit.bin file into the folder on your SD card. Go back over to the file explorer window for downloads and navigate backwards several times until you get to the root of downloads. Now you can delete the entire DSi AIL folder. And remember, of course, all of this stuff is still backed up in your recycle bin if you need it later. Close out every instance of File Explorer in your desktop as you're done for now. Remove the SD card from your computer and put it back in your DSi. 
Power on your system and relaunch the camera out. Focus your attention on the bottom touch display. Make sure that you have SD card selected by tapping on it. Now that you have it selected, tap on the album button. This time, instead of loading up photos, it loads the setup configuration for Twilight Menu++. That's the custom firmware that we'll be permanently installing in just a moment. Use the D-pad to move back and forth through the list of region and language choices and press the A button to lock in your changes. An important note here, you don't have to set the language and region settings to the same ones that your system originally came with. You can choose any region and language setting that you like. Once you have these changes locked in, your system will restart. Press the A button and you'll be booted to the splash screens for Twilight Menu++. Give the system a moment and you'll see a message in the bottom touchscreen that music is being prepared for the Twilight Menu++ Plus Plus home screen. Give your DSi a minute to do its magic and you'll be at the Twilight Menu++ Plus Plus home screen for the first time. Focus your attention on the bottom touch display. You'll need to make a backup of your system NAND or flash memory storage before proceeding. To do this, scroll through the list of choices to Dump Tool and select it with the A button to launch it. It's a really straightforward process, just press the A button to dump your system memory. I'd make sure to have at least a gigabyte or so worth of storage available on your SD card to cover both the backup of the system and any software that you have installed. Give your system a few minutes to complete the backup process, and once it's done, you'll see a confirmation message on screen. Press the Start button on your device to go back to the Twilight Menu++ Plus Plus home screen. A quick note here, if at any point you don't have Twilight loaded up, you can load it in exactly the same way that you exploited the camera app the first time. Load the camera application, tap SD card, and tap album. This will reload Twilight, skipping over the settings section since you've already established your settings, and take you directly to the home menu. This is great and all, but you don't want to have to go through this process every single time just to launch Twilight. Here's how you fix that. In the bottom touch display, navigate to the Unlaunch Installer app and either tap on it or select it with the A button. Focus your attention on the top display. From here, use the D-pad to move the highlight arrow down to Install Now and select it with the A button. You'll see a confirmation on screen once the install is complete. Go ahead and power off your Nintendo DSi at this point. Before you power your device back on, press and hold the A and B button together and then press the power button. This takes you to the Unlaunch menu. Focus your attention on the top display. Use the D-pad to move the highlight arrow down to Options and select it with the A button. The first listing you'll see here says No Button and it should probably say something like File Menu. Select it with the A button. What we're going to do here is establish that if you press No Buttons when you turn the power on with your device, it will boot the Twilight Menu++ Plus Plus Home Screen. Select the No Button text with the A button, then scroll down, and you'll probably have to scroll down just a little bit past what you see on screen, until you see the listing for Twilight Menu++. Plus Plus. Select it with the A button. What you want to look for in the subsequent menu that appears is that you've changed something like File Menu to specifically SDMC and the listing for boot.nds. Once you verify that you have the correct settings for the No Button listing, scroll down with the highlight arrow to save and exit, and select it with the A button to lock in this change. Power off your system and power it back on, this time without holding any buttons. When you turn the system back on, it will probably look like nothing has changed throughout this entire process. But once you get through the initial startup splash screen, you'll see that Twilight Menu++ Plus Plus has been booted automatically and you'll be taken directly to the home screen for Twilight Menu++ Plus Plus each and every time you reboot your Nintendo DSi or DSi XL. Power off your DSi, remove the SD card, and put it into your computer. There's no way you'd want to do this much work and not back up the SD card that you just created, especially since it has your system backup on it. To make things easy to shuffle around, I've moved the File Explorer window for the SD card over to the left side and snapped it into place. Create a new folder anywhere on your computer that you'd like, in this case the desktop. I'm going to name this folder DSi Backup, just to make it easy to recognize. Open the DSi Backup folder. I'll grab the File Explorer window for it and just drag it and snap it to the right side. From here, you can select every single thing that's on your DSi's SD card and drag and drop it into the folder to back it up. It's super important that you save this backup somewhere on your computer because if anything ever happens to your DSi, you'll need the backup of your NAND or your system flash memory in order to get things working correctly again. There are two things you need to clean up on your SD card. The first one is you can delete the unlaunch.nds application off the root. Remember, it's actually already installed as part of Twilight, 
the NTS file there was just the installer for unlaunch. We also need to fix the camera album situation, that pid.bin file. Double click into the private folder. Double click into the DS folder. Double click into the app folder. Then double click into the 484E494A folder. Remember we renamed your original pit file here? Delete the pit.bin file that's already here. That's the one that we used as part of the exploit and you don't need it any longer. Now you can rename the original pit bin file from whatever you named it to back to pit.bin. Remove the SD card from your computer and put it back into your DSi. This jailbreak is great and all, but there's a glaring problem still remaining. There's nothing fun to do with it yet. Let's fix that. Learn how to play backups of your favorite DSi games in just a matter of minutes with this video shown on screen and linked in the video description and pinned comment.